Okay, so let's start with the first concept, which is the fundamental counting principle. Okay, in this case, we're going to have two events. We're going to name those E sub 1 and E sub 2, event 1 and event 2. The first event, we, it can occur in M different ways. So we're going to use M sub 1 to refer to the ways that we can count the first event. And then a second event, or E sub 2, occurs in M sub 2 different ways. And then what we're going to do to find the number of ways the two events can occur, we would multiply those two, two um, different ways together. So the result would be M1 times M2. Okay, so let's look at our scenario so you can see it as an actual problem. It says you go to Applebee's for their $10 special. There are four appetizer choices, eight drink choices, five main dish choices, and two dessert choices. How many different ways can you order your meal? Well, first of all, we need to figure out how many events are occurring. Well, in this problem, we have an appetizer, a drink, a main dish, and a dessert. So we actually have four events. So what I like to do is just go ahead and draw myself four blanks, one for each, representing each event. Okay, then I'm going to write down my possibilities, how many ways each event can occur in each of the blanks. So I've got appetizers first, so I've got four appetizers, and then I have eight drink choices, so eight drink choices, and then five main dishes, and then I have two desserts. Now for the counting principle, all I do is multiply all these together. So let's grab my handy dandy calculator and I'm going to multiply together 4 times 8 times 5 times 2. And I get, let me pull this back out, 320 different ways I can go to Applebee, Applebee's and get a meal 328 20 different ways so I could go almost every day the whole year and get a, an order from the menu and get a different common or different um, different meal every each of those times so it's kind of interesting to see how many different ways you can do it so let's look at a couple other counting principles okay he, we've got a social security number I think most of you have a social security number and there are nine digits in that number how many social security numbers are possible? Well, you have to think, well, how many events do I have going on? I have nine events, one for each digit. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, oops, eight, nine. I'm trying to draw straight, didn't draw straight, but that's all right. Okay, then you are going to multiply all these events together so I'm going to multiply these and I've got to start thinking how many different possibilities how many different ways can I pick the first digit well I have the numbers one through nine plus we can't forget about the a zero a zero counts also so you actually have ten different numbers to choose from including zero so the first digit could be zero. It doesn't say it can't be. So I have 10 choices. Well, how many choices do I have for the, my second digit? I have 10 more choices because I can repeat numbers. So I'm going to have 10 choices for all nine positions. So it's just going to be 10 times 10 times 10, nine times. Okay. We can also write this as 10, whoops, to the ninth power. 10 to the 9th, so let's grab our calculator and pull that back out, and we'll actually figure out how many Social Security numbers can be created. It's going to be a lot. Wow. So I've got one with one, two, three, four, nine zeros after it. Okay. So let's write that down. I should have known that. Sorry about that. Um, let's grab my pen here. Whoops. Grab my pen. And I've got one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight, nine. So what's that? A uh, billion different numbers. We have one billion different ways to get a social security number. So that's a lot. Okay, let's try the phone number problem. Okay, we have a seven digit phone number. How many are possible if the first digit cannot be a zero or a one? We know if it's a zero, then it's going to call the operator. And if it's a one, it's going to call long distance. So we have to eliminate those choices. So how many events do we have going on? Well, we have three in the front, and then we usually have a dash here, and then four in the back. So we have seven different positions or seven events. How many, how many possible outcomes or how many ways can I pick the first digit if I can't use a zero or a one? Well, that means I normally have 10, but I'm taking two away, so I only have eight choices. But then for the second position, I have 10. I can put a zero and a one there, and I can put a 10 here. I can put a 10 here. I can put a 10 here. I can put a 10 here and here, because all of these have 10 different choices. So I have 10, what, to the 6th power, all times 8. So what's 10 to the 6 times 8? Let's take 8 times 10 to the 6th power. And boom, I have, what's that, 1, 2, 3, 8 million different ways. Yep, 8 million, that makes sense. I would have 8 million different phone numbers. Now, as you know, there are probably more than 8 million phone numbers in the world, so we have to add area codes that are three digits, and that adds a whole bunch more possibilities. So you could figure that out, too, if you wanted to. Okay, let's see how this problem slightly different, but we can still use the counting principle. Okay, how many different ways can five cars be arranged on a car carrier truck with room for five vehicles. So let's just think about what we have. We have one of these trucks that has a top floor and a bottom floor, and then it's got an engine up here. I like to draw a little picture of it, okay? And here's the front light, and here's where the driver is, <laughs> okay? And he, it needs to load cars up here. Well, we have a spot for one, two, three, four, five cars, something like that. There may be three on top and two on the bottom. But anyway, we have a spot for five cars. How many different ways could we arrange these five cars? Well, what's different about this is once we place a car, we can't use it again because we've already placed it. So we have to think about our five events. We have five events going on because we have five positions for five cars. So let's draw our five lines to represent each event. Okay, now for spot one, how many different cars can we put up? If we have these five cars lined up, well, we could pick any of them. So we would have five choices. But then for the second position, once we've put a car, let's just say we put the little blue car up there, we now have four choices. And then once we put a car up, let's say we put the red one next, we would then have three choices and then two and then one. So really what we've done is we've created a factorial. Well, what's five factorial? Well, I'm not gonna grab my calculator because this one's pretty easy. That's gonna be 20. And 20 times three is 60. And 60 times 2 is 120. So I have 120 different ways to arrange the cars. That's how many different ways I've got. So there you go. We got 120 different ways to put them on the truck.